Good morning, everybody. This is Cassie Stumo. I'm the Marketing Specialist here at EAC. We'll start off today with an introduction of EAC and then PTC's Application Engineer and Technical Account Specialist, Paul Dye, um, will be presenting to us on what's new in MathCAD 6.0. Everyone gets a recording of this session pending any technical difficulties. Uh, please feel free to ask questions along the way and we will answer them after the presentation. Um, we also have a short survey that appears once the webinar is over, so please take a moment to answer those. First off, I will tell you a little bit about who we are at EAC. Our mission is to transform the way companies design, manufacture, connect to, and service their products. Um, we're not only a value-added reseller for PTC, but we are the number one solutions provider for PTC in the country with experts in 22 areas of product development. We're located all over the U.S. and our headquarters is in Burnsville, Minnesota. We offer our customers everything they need for product development from CAD and simulation software for the full product design process with Creo and Ansys. Software for managing service documentation, such as ArborText, Vuforia Studio, and Creo Illustrate. And software for managing product data management, such as um, Windchill, ThingWorks Navigate, and our customizable EAC productivity apps. Uh, we assist with design and engineering projects and offer webinars and PTC certified training courses for continuous learning. We also implement the industrial internet of things and augmented reality into business strategies to jumpstart initiatives around digital transformation um, and connecting all things in your company. Um, we are also a commercial reseller for Form Labs offering the Form 3 desktop SLA printer, which is available for as low as uh, $34.99. So really EAC is just the company you need to partner with to get all of the technology you need at the forefront to make your team successful. Um, so you can continue to do the things that you do best. Um, I will go ahead and hand things over to Paul so he can get started. Thank you very much, Cassie. And again, my name is Paul Dye. I am an application engineer with PTC. And today I'm going to go over a little bit about MathCAD Prime and what's new with the 6.0 also. I'll start off by going over just some of the challenges that we see out in the industry today around design documentation. And so we're combating a lot of these with MathCAD Prime, and specifically Prime 6.0. I'm going to discuss some of the capabilities that we have with MathCAD and view a brief demonstration, and then talk about how we can move forward with this tool. And so to start with some of these challenges that we're seeing is oftentimes it can be very difficult to capture, share, or even reuse design intent. Many of our engineering calculations are often created using data from multiple systems and arcane languages, which is compounded by a lot of poor communication, which leads to a loss of knowledge. We also see a loss of traceability between initial market requirements and the final design, which could have some errors that need to be fixed. And any lack of documentation is going to lead to inefficiencies in that process, and that's going to cause unnecessary delays. It's a big issue with trying to standardize the processes or tools that we work with on a daily basis. The problems can be introduced due to design intent being stored in multiple different locations, which leads to process inefficiencies and oftentimes product delays. And many times design calculations have to be started from scratch when you're moving between different design iterations or a new product development. And this is because our engineering calculations are in general unmanaged and uncontrolled. And if our processes aren't standardized from the start, then there's likely to be a lack of early design validation, which leads to a need for rework. So is your design optimized? Is it the best trade-off between cost, strength, time to market, customer requirements. And many times your mathematical calculations and errors are either caught too late, which leads to costly rework, or sometimes they're missed entirely, which leads to increased aftermarket service or costly recalls, which we certainly need to avoid. And we wanna fix that. And the way that we're going about it is with MathCAD Prime. This process is really made up of analyzing, solving, documenting, and sharing. At its base, MathCAD is a digital engineering notebook to perform calculations and manage design intent. So this picture here really shows that. 
is a document with calculations, notes, charts, graphs. It's all very visual. What it's not is a bunch of code and computer programming to sort through and try to understand. And that's not to say that MathCAD doesn't have a powerful engine running at its core, but us as the user, we're not gonna have to see that. We just work in a neat and robust interface and let the documentation do that work behind the scenes. And working with MathCAD, we have what's called the whiteboard interface. So this is where we snap all of our work onto. And the default is this nice grid style paper that we're used to seeing in maybe our engineering notebooks. It's also doing out calculations for us. So whatever equations we lay out, provided that we give it the necessary values, it's gonna automatically give us the answers with no need for us to code out a single thing. And this document really has everything built into it, from live math, text, graphics, even call up other programs, which we'll see a little bit later on. It isn't all for calculations. Just remember that we do all this to display the design process in an easy to understand manner. A very useful feature that we do have with MathCAD is the ability to manage units. So say you add nine inches plus two feet times eight furlongs, well, it understands each of these and it's gonna output into whatever units that we need. And one of the big things to note here is that everything is self-documenting. So do all these calculations, but once you're done, all the documentation is right there for you. It really simplifies the process. This process is very much WYSIWYG. So what you see is what you get. So it's not different formats for printing and whatnot. It's really just a page. And we really have a lot of capabilities with that. It's a huge function library with math notation, solvers, data analysis, statistics, Fourier transforms, all these different things that maybe we've studied and might have some knowledge on, but luckily MathCAD can do all of these out for us. And many different plot options from simple XY plots to polar coordinates, contour plots, it's all right there. And also these are all live plots. So using whatever data is on the page, we can change things around and then the plots are gonna update right there for us. In the context of what we're working with here moving forward with MathCAD Prime 6.0, we've enhanced your ability around documentation. So we've done this by giving users the ability to create their own margin settings for whatever purpose you have in need. This also includes full control over the header and footer options as well. And productivity was another area that was a focus with MathCAD Prime 6.0. So we have the ability to spell check, it's really been improved, including the ability to change the proofing language to whatever happens to be necessary at that time. We also now have the ability to provide hyperlinks in our calculations and documentation. So say we wanted to link to a website from part of our description or calculations, we can now do that with Prime 6.0. Working on usability, we've worked to improve our ability to find and replace elements within our document. We've also expanded our options around printing off our calculations, including the API method to save as for different file types. On our chart application, we can now take our plots and zoom to different areas to select what we want to focus on and what we want that focus to be in terms of the data, rather than including all that extraneous information. And once we finish our plots, we have the option now to save this off as an image file if we so choose to do so. And what I'd like to move over and do now is show you a little bit of what, what MathCAD Prime 6.0 looks like going through that flow. There we go. All right, so here we have our document that we're going to be working with. And so this is going to be working with the design of a piston that we're working on. And the goal here is to maximize the ratio between volume and surface area to increase the efficiency of this engine. We have that equation that defines this relationship. So we can highlight that equation to make sure that it's emphasized properly. And we also have a description of this equation that we can attach to the right. So anyone who looks at that highlighted term can then see that relationship helps to minimize heat and pressure loss during the process of combustion. Next, we can move on to defining some of our constants that we'd like to use throughout our study, including the displacement and compression ratio. And for those values, like I mentioned earlier, we'll give them units to keep our calculations straight throughout the process. And of course, for those ratios, we're not going to have any associated units. Okay, next, we can start to define the values that we'll be needing to use. And this can really be anything. In our case, we have our bore diameter, the head edge thickness, number of cylinders, and a few more. Again, for all those values, type in the units. 
and then let the system figure them out for you in the calculations. After that, we'll move on to defining some of the functions to calculate the volume and surface area for the spherical cap. And these functions reference the diagram on the right. In MathCAD, these functions can utilize the variables that we laid out. In this case, we see that both the volume and surface area of the spherical cap utilize both the height and diameter that we can draw from our diagram. Okay, the next thing that we'll do is define the requirements or constraints for our study. These design requirements are really important because we want to maximize on the ratio of volume to surface area, but we also have additional considerations that we have to adhere to, such as the height of the piston head and the engine block. And all of these things that we have to be mindful of going forward in our calculations. And before we do the optimization, we first need to define our functions in order to calculate the things that we care about. So we care about the volume, surface area, and most importantly, we care about the ratio because the ratio is what we actually want to do the optimization on. And these are all functions that define the volume and surface area for the different components of our design, including the piston head and the engine block. We can also see that we're utilizing all those different variables and constants that we defined earlier in the document. And in yellow here, we do have the master function that takes everything that we built so far and calculates the overall ratio of volume to surface area. And we want to maximize the output of that function and then solve for the height of the piston head and also the height of the engine block. The next area that I'd like to hit on here is the characteristic curves for both the volume and the surface area. So these are curves that we're going to be utilizing in the equations and using those that we went through and defined above. And that's again, the volume of both the piston head and the engine block along with the surface area for both the piston head and engine block as well. Because at the start, when we went through and defined all those different variables with both values and units, we're now able to take that data that the system automatically went through and solved for us, and we can begin to gain a little bit of insight here. And now we can see one of our collapsible areas, essentially hiding some of that plot information that we have being solved out. So we have the option to leave that hidden to start to avoid clogging up the visual space for someone that might be scanning through the document. And then opening this section up, we can see very visually the relationship between some of the variables or functions that we've defined. So for example, we can see as the height of the engine block is changing, what effect does that have on the volume and surface area? Again, we have all those units defined for the values in our plots. Once we have the information we need, then we have the option to collapse that region and again, have it hidden from sight. In my case, I see that as some pretty vital information, so I'll keep that being displayed for now. We have another collapsible section down here below for the optimization that we're going to be going through. Yeah, maybe these are some very important calculations and I don't want just anyone being able to access this info. Well, I can choose to have this area password protected. This really helps to ensure my intellectual property is secure. And we also with that have options to keep the regions locked as well. So have them either be locked closed until a password is provided or we can have it be locked to be open to ensure that this information is being properly displayed. So now I don't have a random designer on my team coming in and making changes to the values or the equations that we're worried about. And I can rest assured that my optimization is being performed exactly as it was intended to be. And once we go through that optimization, we can then see that the optimal height of the piston head is right around one millimeter and the optimal height of the engine block settles out just around 43.75 millimeters. Okay, next we have another collapsible region that contains some of our calculations around the requirements verification. So here we can verify that our solution has met our requirements by taking a look at the values such as compression ratio and the engine displacement. We can check this against our requirements and once we're finished, we can simply close that back up again or leave it open to display the information by default. Okay, here, finally, we can present our results in a tabular format using an Excel component. And with just a click, we're able to access that element right within Excel, make any changes that we need to. And once we're done, just close out and see the updated results right back here in MathCAD. So that's really a good overview of the process that we go through in working with MathCAD, from defining some of our constants and variables, doing the calculations, both numeric and symbolic, and then putting it into a form that's very visual and provides some really great insight. What I'd like to do now is touch on some of the improvements that we've made in MathCAD Prime 6.0.
primarily around productivity. The first, first feature that I'd like to demonstrate is our ability to create hyperlinks, and attach them to our components. In our case here, say I want to create a reference for calculating the compression ratio, like we did in our calculations. I can first create a text block, then go to our source and simply grab the URL from where that information is being presented and bring that right back into MathCAD. And for our link, we can give that some reference as well. So we can give it a name, maybe related to the calculation of the compression ratio. Okay, now that we have our reference title, we just simply highlight it, add in the link, and paste the URL from our source material. So now if we want to give the person reading or working with the document the option to go get some additional information on how we got to these equations that we used in our calculations, we now have the ability to do that. And the next productivity improvement in MathCAD Prime 6.0, I'd like to quickly demonstrate is our spell check feature. So for example, if we try to type out the word reference, but by accident, we add an extra E on the end. Well, we see it gives us that red line underneath. Our first option that we have is the ability to add that to our working dictionary. So if that's a word that we often use in our documents, we can simply add that to the dictionary and we won't have a problem moving forward. And of course, the spell check works exactly how you think it would. So it'll give suggestions based on the word that's misspelled. And finally, we do have different proofing languages now that we're able to work with and utilize throughout this process. Okay, so that was a good look of what we go through in the process of working with MathCAD, specifically now with Prime 6.0. So moving forward with this, we're now really optimizing on our designs because we can really reference the part of any part of the design process that we're working with and ensure that each step that we took was really done in the best way. Overall, we're improving the quality of our designs. We don't have any errors slipping through the cracks because we truly understand each variable that's being used. We're reducing our time to market by eliminating unnecessary errors along the way, really maximizing our engineering productivity and the efficiency at which we can work. MathCAD Prime 6.0 also eliminates or at least greatly reduces the need to re-engineer critical values for next generation products. We're also able to reduce our overall development costs by not only avoiding errors and rework our calculations, also more effectively sharing and collaborating with different colleagues and teams in a common format that really anybody and everybody can understand. Okay, so that's all that I have to go over and show you for what we're working with MathCAD Prime 6.0 and I'll hand it back to Cassie to wrap up and take any questions and moving forward. All right, thanks so much Paul. Um, this last slide uh, just calls out that we have a promotion right now for MathCAD and Creo packages. When you commit to a two-year subscription, you can buy one license and get the second license half off. Um, the promotion lasts through December. The other promotion, it's not listed here. Um, we don't yet have a landing page for it, but it has started, so that will be coming soon. Um, it's Cyber MathCAD. Usually this deal comes out around the holidays. Uh, with this one, you get 25% off per uh, one individual or floating license with a two or three year uh, subscription commitment. 